and I threw this dude, and he, like, landed near his head, and I was like, oh, shit, but the dude was, like, getting back up, and he was ready to hit me, and so I, like, grabbed him again, and the other dude's, like, helping me drag him down as well, so we're, like, dragging him down this second flight of stairs, and he's literally hanging on to the railing as I, like, pry him off. What's up, guys? Tristan Nago here with another video. Today's video is going to be a story. This story is from a few years ago when I lived in downtown Vancouver, Canada. This is when I was working construction. I had a night job where I worked at the bar on the weekends when I wasn't working construction, and I lived directly downtown. If you know Vancouver, uh, you know of Granville Street, which is like literally the main drag. I lived right on that street not even a minute from every single bar that you could think of. This was pretty awesome for me. A young kid by himself, but not by myself. We were in this like small ass apartment. It was three bedrooms, but it was it had five people in it. I sh luckily had my own room. I had to pay like $940 a month when I was living there. But at the time it was worth it for uh, what I was doing. And you know, it had one bathroom, so there was often times I was peeing in cups because I literally couldn't wait that long, which, I mean, it's not that bad. Like, you just you just rinse it and then put it in the sink or whatever, toilet. <laughs> um, but anyways, I had a cool roommate uh, who lived, who was from Switzerland, really fun guy. He, I became really good friends with him, and he liked to have a lot of parties, so he always invited people over. And we'd often have 15 to 20 people in this small-ass apartment. He would cook food for us. He was a really good chef, so we'd always have like these dinner parties where we'd all get drunk and talk and have people over, laugh, eat food, really good food. I gotta like stress that. This dude was so good at cooking that I was often involved in these parties and I'd pay him to cook us food, so it was super cool. This Korean guy who notoriously, and I didn't know at the time, would get really drunk. He'd pass out places. He wouldn't leave or he would get aggressive. And this dude shows up in like a purple blazer with purple dyed hair. This dude looked whack. And I still didn't know about this. Like he wasn't even like uh, that bad when he was sober or like relatively sober. He seemed like an all right guy. Like he wasn't causing any problems. And then he eventually passed out because he started drinking a lot and everyone was started to leave. My two roommates uh, who were together I don't know if they're together now, but they're t they were together. One of them lived in one room. One of them, one of them lived in the other room, and they were they were a couple. And so they were like rolling, and when I mean say rolling, I mean uh, they were on MDMA. So eyes like beads, and you know, they're all like in their feelings and like probably like kissing each other and stuff and getting into trouble in bed, and. I'm in my room, I'm probably playing video games or something like that, and I don't think I had to work that night, but I wasn't drinking uh, very much, so I was quite sober at the time, and this dude wakes up and starts, like, stumbling all over the place, like, knocking our shoe rack over, just causing a mess, and I come out, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And they, like, kind of want him to leave, uh, but he's, like, kind of saying no, he's being, like, difficult he's not giving us straight answers i offered to pay for his cab to go home and i was like asking him where he needed to go or if he needed me to walk him to the bus station or the subway or whatever get him a cab anything this dude was not having it and we thought uh we also told him that he could just sleep on our couch and then so we told him he could sleep on the couch we like walk back into our rooms we think he's gonna be all right and I still don't know at this point that he's like this aggressive douchebag. And more noise starts happening. Basically, they, the two, uh, cu the couple that was rolling basically told me like, like, what do we do? Like, we can't have him here. Like, he's making noise. We had a bunch of noise complaints before that. So like, we were on like our last straw. Like, I didn't want to get us kicked out. We were like packed up and the party was done before 11, which is like when you need to have be quiet time. Like people have to work the next day or whatever. After 11, you, you need to go to the bar or you need to quiet down, basically. And this was like the last straw for me. So I go out, I confront him again, and I'm like, yo, I'll buy you a cab or you can sleep on the couch, but you can't make noise. And dude's like unresponsive, like he wasn't talking to me. Eventually, I got a little bit frustrated, and this was my fault. I said to the dude, 
listen, man, you're starting to really piss me off. And I've offered you my couch. I've offered you to give you a cab. I can pay for your cab or you need to just leave. Then I, I managed to get the dude out of the door. And I closed the door, locked it. And then he just starts banging on the door. And then they're like, what do we do? Like, I think you need to kick him out. Like, they, they turned to me, like, and I wasn't even that big at the time. Like, I'm a lot bigger now, but I was, like, relatively muscular at the time. And so they turn to me, and they're like, okay, you got to throw him out. And these guys, this girl is, like, super small. The guy that I lived with wasn't very big at all either. And so I opened the door, ready to just, like, throw this guy out. I didn't want to, like, hurt him or anything. And I'm, I'm lucky that that didn't happen, but I open the door. The dude just looks at me. He's like, starts taking off his jacket. His jacket's off. And then I like, I wait no effort at all. Like I didn't, I didn't want to get punched. I don't like getting punched. So I literally just grabbed this dude. I run at him. Like I, it was like a double leg takedown sort of thing. But I like, instead of just taking him to the ground, I like, got into him like in a clinch position and just started dragging him to the to the stairs and the dude's like hanging on to everything he's like no like he wasn't saying that but he was like holding on to shit and he was like really like struggling and i launched him down this like flight of stairs like it was like it was like four or five stairs onto like this little platform before it go like turns into the, the other bigger stairwell I threw this dude and he like landed near his head and I was like oh shit but the dude was like getting back up and he was ready to hit me and so I like grabbed him again and the other dude's like helping me drag him down as well so we're like dragging him down this second flight of stairs and he's literally hanging on to the railing as I like pry him off of it like it's like this little like toddler that doesn't want to leave like the playground or something like it's like no like this guy's just hanging onto this railing so I'm still dragging him downstairs prying his freaking hand his uh fingers off we get him down to the stairs out the door we throw him out the door and then we close the door and he like runs back at it and he's like banging on it and shit and we just walked back upstairs because he couldn't get back in if he didn't have the the key fob so it was kind of funny because it's like 11 30 p.m at night on a Friday downtown Vancouver and everyone sees this and they're like yelling and stuff and they thought it was funny. And the story isn't like to brag about like throwing some drunk Korean dude out that got aggressive with me, but we just couldn't have that guy like there because he was gonna cause a noise complaint and he was gonna ruin those guys like MDMA trip and he was ruining my night. And we like threw this guy's uh, clothes out the window. <laughs> I never heard from him again, but apparently he texted the girl asking me where my uh, address was he didn't he was too stupid to know that I lived there and uh, she wouldn't tell him obviously but it, it just shows how drunk he was and how like intoxicated he was and how like aggressive this dude can be because he was trying to ask for my address even though he if he was even remotely coherent he would have known that I lived there but moral of the story is I probably could have made a better decision. I probably should have called the cops and I probably shouldn't have escalated it like I did. No one's perfect. And you know what? Like worst case scenario, I could have like, I honestly could have killed or paralyzed the dude if he landed even further um, worse on his neck. And if I like cracked his neck or broke his neck or something like that's me in jail for the rest of my life. If you're ever in that situation, don't escalate it. Call the cops. Just deal with it that way. I just thought in my head if I had to call the cops, like we were definitely getting kicked out and I didn't, I wasn't in the situation where that would have been very good for me at the time, which really sucked, but that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And you know what, that kid probably deserved it. And <laughs> like he needed someone to stand up to him because I'm pretty sure every time, other time that that's happened, some dude just like crumbled to him and just uh, thought he was like, yeah, they just back down to him and let him boss them around, boss them around in their own house. Like I'm not that kind of person. Like if you're in my house, and you're not, you're disrespecting me. You're, it's usually gonna turn into a fight, or I mean, most of the time. But in this case, like thinking back on it in retrospect, like I probably should have handled it differently. Things happen, and you know what? I got lucky that he didn't hurt himself further. 
And you know what? Maybe this dude had a reality check. <laughs> I, I don't know. Apparently he was like some, some rich Korean kid from, from Korea. And he's just like one of those trust fund kids that thinks they can push people around. And, you know, you step up to the wrong person that's bigger than you. And they're not going to get pushed around. So hope you like this story. Let me know how you would have handled it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my content, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all that. I really appreciate it. And more videos to come. Thanks, guys. Peace.